Oh, I'm getting nervous. Absolutely no shoulder on either side of the freeway. How many miles range does this car have after seven years? We're gonna figure it out. That's not good. This is our 2017 Tesla Model X. It has 105,000 miles on it. So when we bought this, it had 295 miles that it said was the max range. I remember one time we did get that above 300, once or twice. One of the questions that people have when it comes to electric cars, especially Teslas, is how much range do you lose over time just by owning and driving the car? We've done all the driving in it. Yes, we took some road trips early on, but mostly over the last three or four years, this is my wife's car and she drives it solely to drive the kids around town. This is the wall outlet that I have here in our rental home. And if you look inside of here, we have 240 miles and charging complete. Charging repeatedly beyond daily driving needs will shorten battery life. Would you like to lower the charging limit? So definitely not recommended to charge your car to all the way full all the time unless you're doing a road trip, but today is a road trip. Charge complete. Now, you can see right here, it does look like there's a little bit extra in the battery pack. So I don't know if it's just like protecting the car by not charging it completely full because the battery pack's old but 240 miles is the estimated range in here. Now, my experience with this car is that we never get what's promised, we get way less. And part of it might have to do with these big rims on here. These are the ones that came with it originally, I think they're 22 inches, but then we also got two sets of free rims from Tesla for doing referrals back in the day. That was one of the rewards that they had for the early Tesla adopters like me. So let's unplug this car right now, boom. Unplugged, goodbye little charger cable. As I'm filming this, it's almost Christmas and somebody really cool, thank you Renee from Sacramento for buying this 22 ounce signed water bottle. It's tight to Christmas as of filming this video, but I think we're gonna be able to make it. So that's my plan. I'm gonna stop by the post office, ship this last second water bottle, and then we're gonna drive 70 miles an hour, no faster, on the highway I'm gonna drive toward Las Vegas. Now, if you look outside, other than that tractor over there, there's no wind. It is a nice day. I heard a cow. It's 55 degrees, so the battery is not going to have too much strain on it. Yeah, my window whistles every time it sounds like a cat. So I think this is gonna be a very fair test of what this battery can do. All right, now this is the tricky part. The speed limit's 75 miles an hour, but most people go like 80, definitely 80, and a lot of people go 85 miles an hour, so. Going 70 is going to be very slow. We're gonna have a lot of people passing us, but I gotta stick to this. I wanna make sure that it's a fair range test. I also can't do things like drive behind this guy right here. If I'm driving behind a semi truck, I'm gonna get more range just because there's less wind. On the highway we go. Nice road trip day, thanks for joining me. I'm also gonna throw this in here. The first three people, the first three people, that actually guess exactly how many miles we drove until we stopped this thing. Don't skip forward. Um, I will send you a water bottle. So we'll connect with you. Just leave a comment down below, first three. This is one of the most beautiful drives in America. I am telling you, it is just canyons that they blasted out the rock and you just cruise right down through it. Sometimes when it's raining, all you see are thousands of waterfalls that are falling off of the rocks. It's just gorgeous. I actually really love this drive and I'm really impressed that Tesla does a good job with autopilot to be able to navigate through this canyon. A lot of people that have not experienced autopilot like extensively on the highways, I don't feel like have a good clear picture. They just read different scary headlines in the media, but in reality, self-driving or the assisted driving, whatever you want to call it, is actually phenomenal. If I'm being 100% honest, this is brutal going 70 miles an hour. My Tesla Model S maxes out on autopilot at 85 miles an hour. So typically I'm at 80 or 85. There we go. We have gone 100 miles and the car says we have 120 miles range left. So we have spent or burnt 120 miles worth of energy to go 100 miles. So um, not bad, honestly, probably better than I thought that we're just about to come over the hill where you can see Las Vegas. Wow, it is smoggy in Vegas. That is supposed to be Las Vegas right there. I can see the stratosphere, but it is just covered in pollution. 
Ooh, hip race. All right, so here's the plan. I have driven 111 miles and I've just arrived near the NASCAR racetrack. I'm going to drive around the freeways of Las Vegas, Nevada for the next hour or so, however long it takes, hour and a half to burn off this 107 miles range. We gotta get to zero. If I have to push this into the supercharger, we're doing that. I am just going to get to zero to find out what the actual charge is. All right, this is a good sign. You are almost too far away from chargers. Right now I have 23 miles left. We've gone 183 miles. I really don't wanna have to get towed like this car because I ran out of energy, so let's try not to run out of energy. You're gonna go to the Link charger. It's 13 miles away, and we'll have less than 1%. We'll have 1% left when we get there. Vegas, baby! There we go. We got Vegas, we are on the highway. We are in traffic speed limits, only 35 miles an hour. We have five miles range left. Charging needed to get to destination. We got to get off the freeway right now. Um, I've got five miles range left. I think I can still make it. Typically when you hit zero, you have like another 10 miles range left. But with the older vehicles, maybe it's not as reliable. Like maybe you don't have that 10 miles left or maybe it'll stop earlier than that. It's definitely something I don't recommend to run your car to zero. It's not good for the batteries. In an older car, this is probably gonna hurt my range moving forward in the future too. So I'm doing this for you guys. I'm doing this for me to know what the actual range is. This is a scientific test. Um, it's not gonna break your car to do this. It shouldn't. So it's not like it's that bad of a thing. From that perspective, we are stuck in some traffic on I-15. Talk about range anxiety. You have four miles left and you have 3.7 miles to get to your charger in an old Tesla. Let's see what happens here. Do I dare get back on the freeway? I don't know if it's smart to get back on the freeway. This is a range test though. We're getting back on the freeway. This is so dumb. If this car stalls out on the freeway on I-15 with all this traffic, oh my gosh, I'd be so dumb. And it's it'd be all my fault. I'm getting on the freeway and it says I have two miles left. Let's see. Two miles left. We have one mile left. Oh my gosh. This is not smart driving right here. Okay, Flamingo Road. That's where we need to exit. Right there, Flamingo. We are a 0.3 of a mile away from that. Look at that, there's no more red mark on the line. It just says, the battery says it's empty right there. It says zero, or it says, it doesn't say zero, but there's no more red mark there that there was just a second ago. All right, we're getting off the freeway. This is progress. This is good. There we go, crossing the boulevard right now. I love this place. Vegas is such a great city. I know I was stressing about the freeway, but we're still at one, according to the thing right here. Off. We gotta get it to zero though. That is the goal. Okay, we're gonna make this light. I'm gonna go a little fast for it. Hold my camera so it doesn't fly off. Yep, okay, we are closer. There's a sphere. There's the link. We're still at one. Shoot. We're so close, guys. We're so close, but it's at one. We have to get it to zero. <laughs> Look at that, one. Let's get it to zero. We're just gonna have to drive around here. We're just gonna drive up and down this road until it gets to zero. I let those people go by right there, and we hit zero. We're at zero. There's a supercharger right there. Zero achieved. Let's go plug this car in. It is 61 degrees here in Las Vegas. It was 55 degrees when we started, so ideal temperatures so that we didn't have to use a bunch of energy on heating or cooling the car. There's a couple things that have surprised me here. So when we first got this car, it was 295 miles range. We went a total of 202.8 miles. So we have effectively in seven years lost 32% of the range inside of this battery pack. That is not great. I'll let you draw your own conclusions on that side of it. In my opinion, not ideal, not great. In seven years, it's not like you lose a ton of range off of your gas vehicle. But also what's interesting is that we only used 72.3 kilowatt hours of energy. But what's weird is this is a 100D, so a dual motor. The 100 stands for 100 kilowatt hours of energy with the battery pack, and yet we only use 72.3 for this drive. We can drive 32% less miles, but we're also using 28% less of the original batteries that are in there, so that kind of adds up, right? All right, we're plugged in, running into here. <laughs> Look at that, zero miles left. I have done it, and now I'm at one. So overall with this car, 
we have about 200 miles usable range. That's going 70 miles an hour, not driving faster, not driving into wind, not driving into extreme temperatures in a car that's seven years old and has over 100,000 miles. So some would probably say, you're doing pretty good. I mean, you only lost 30% of your range after 100,000 miles and seven years of using this vehicle. That could be pretty good. And to others, they might be like, forget that. If I'm gonna have a car for a long time, I want to be able to get a gas car so that I don't lose a bunch of range. The other thing to consider is as I was looking this up, all the warranties that we have left on this car are gone in 2025. So the drivetrain and whatever other limited things that the warranties cover with this car, it's gonna be gone pretty soon. Yeah, we've loved this car, it's been great. I would love to get my wife a new vehicle. I've tried to get other vehicles in the past, some of the Mercedes EQS, but I just couldn't get past the dealership model and it wasn't the right car at that time. Would I upgrade Leslie to another Model X? Absolutely I would, I would love to do it. But Leslie loves this car, even with its more limited range, even with the not as good suspension, even with little things like it charges slower. There's a lot of stuff with this car that she still is okay with and she wants to keep this car for a while. So I'm not gonna complain. It's been a fantastic car. I love it. It was over $100,000 when we bought it. Probably worth like 25,000 now is my guess if we were to sell it or trade it in. And for that price, Leslie's like, I'm good. 200 miles range, keep this car for 25,000. I don't need to go pay another 70 or 80 grand just to get another vehicle that's kind of the same as this one. So let me know your thoughts. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think? Are you surprised by this? Is it good? Is it bad? Now I need to charge, go get some lunch, and then uh, drive all the way back home for a few hours. It's kind of a long day. And just those of you that follow us, we will show you our rental home. It's not super exciting, but it is the place that we are living for now. And we need to share more plans about what we're doing moving forward. Like, are we building a house? Are we just gonna live in this rental forever? We'll let you know. I apologize for all the dust down here. I should probably have cleaned that. I'll wipe it away. What am I doing? Let's throw that out the window.